Hi, um, today I'm going to talk about artificial neural network uh, and how to apply the neural net function in R. So here I, I randomly grab a data set online and then for this data set I have 40 independent variable and then one dependent variable which is range from I think is 0 to 15. So there will be 15 category in this uh, Y variables. So first of all, I'm going to run, I'm going to run the algorithm before I'm going to explain what I'm doing here, since it's going to take a long time to run to get the result. So first of all, I'm going to, um, I'm going to manipulate my original data by standardize the data. So I'm using each column minus by the minimum of the data set of each column and then divided by the range of the same column. And then this will help me to standardize my original data set and then scale the data um, to the interval um, between zero and one. I'm going to do the same procedure for both X and Y. So um, doing so can help you to, to, to uh, increase the speed for running the artificial neural network function. You can speed up the process and can also help you to maybe better for converge for to converge uh, for the algorithm. So you see um, and then I separate the original data set. I'm using I'm sample 2000 rows for the training set and then and then I'm going to apply the data to the artificial neural network. So I'm using 40 variables to predict my, my Y, which is the categorical variables, using the training set, and then with the three hidden layers. Um, and then for linear dot output equal to false means we are going to, we are doing a classification problem. If you set it equal to true, then it will be a regression. So we are using so we're doing classification here. And then we can actually plot the result and then we can see what is actually happened happen behind, uh, behind the algorithm. So basically we are going to input all the original 40 variable after scaling into the model. And then for each node, we are going to multiply by a coefficient and then add a constant here and then we will get to the node here. And then before we proceed to the next layer, we are going to apply sigmoid function in this node and then get another result. Then we're going to multiply by this coefficient and add this number and then get the reach to the second uh, to, to the next layer. So you can so this is pretty straightforward to tell you where the data and the number goes. So whenever you, you reach a node, you're going to apply sigmoid and then before you proceed to your next layer. Here I only have one hidden layer with three nodes in between. So that's the reason that um, uh, it, it is somehow faster to run the, um, the algorithm. So um, here I have the output and I'm going to make a prediction for my testing set. And then before, uh, so before I input to the model, I have convert, I have uh, standardized my original data set. So after I make my prediction, I have to convert the prediction back to its original format. So I have to time, I have to multiply by the range and then, and then add it the minimum, which is the reverse proce procedure of this, of, for the standardizing. Um, and then I'm going to get the actual result. And then I can also calculate the MSE here. And I can actually see a table here to see that uh, how my how the algorithm is working. So before I explain the confusion matrix, let me uh, run the the program before I go to the next step. So okay, it might it might take a while to run this program since I have two hidden layers here. So uh, in this confusion matrix, we can see that um, so the column means so this column means the actual result, and then here means the prediction, 
so we can see that um, it seems like the model predicts uh, uh, we have a number of five here, but it actually it doesn't exist in the actual result. So probably maybe the test, maybe the training set has a has a five here, but it, so when I do the sample, maybe I exclude. But it seems like there's a uh, there's a there's some discrepancy from between the train between the prediction and the actual result. And also, it seems like I have an eleven here, which is which it also is not exist in the actual result. So we can add the number here and then. So we can we can actually take a look. It seems like the program has finished. So I mean let me I'm not gonna generate the plot. So let me just do the to see how the accuracy for this model. So I'm going to, to edit the diagonal uh, elements in this uh, function here in this matrix here. Since but this is not a square matrix, so I, I can only do it manually here to see the actual result. So I'm going to add up the diagonal elements. I'm not going to get the 5 here since it doesn't exist in the actual result. So I'm just skip that and then plus 116, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then. And skip for 11. Eighty-eight. Is there a thirteen here? Yeah. Plus forty. Plus two nine seven. And then divided by the how many elements we have here? I think for the testing set we have three thousand five hundred. So divided by three thousand five hundred. And then I'm going to subtract this number by one. So this will give me the prediction error, the classification error. It seems like um, the error is about forty percent. So we so the error occurs forty percent for this uh, for this training set, uh, for the algorithm. But since I increase the hidden layer to two hidden layers with uh, five nodes and two nodes in uh, for each layer, so now I'm going to see if this uh, if, if increasing hidden layers will improve the actual result. Now I'm going to do so. I'm going to get the prediction again, convert it back to the original format, get the actual result, and you see that the MSC is actually decreasing, which I think previously is 0.5, and now it's like 0.25. And we can actually, and then we can see the num see the table here. So yeah, so let's calculate the error, the classification error again, to see if we if it has uh, if the performance has been improved or not. So I'm going to skip the five here. Get I'm only adding the cor the correct prediction and then after I subtract that and then it will the remaining will be the will be the classification error one more okay so I have um, this is for two three four six seven eight nine um, I'm missing uh, for the 13, I think. Skip C3. Okay, so this will give me the a classification error. So so now it's 0.17. So previously it's 40%, and now it's uh, like uh, 20%. So it, it, look, it seems like um, uh, since we added another hidden layer, and then the performance is uh, improving, and then we can actually see the result. Um, let me another one so let me wait for that and then we can see that the performance is actually improving so we have two hidden layers here with five nodes on the first on the second layer two nodes on the third layer and then and then we come and then we uh, reach to the 
to the categorical variables here. That's for the prediction here. So now we can, uh, so, so this is the basic uh, application of this uh, artificial neural network. And then for, for this commands, actually there are some more parameters and arguments that you can put it in to improve the result. So you can take a look in, in, in here and then you can, uh, you can adjust the, algor uh, the algorithm to get ba uh, even better result. So um, I think there is also some, some empirical rules for choosing the hidden layers and even the nodes inside the hidden layers. So um, this algorithm is pretty fancy and there are lots of people using it. And then it is also a very good uh, machine learning algorithm for, uh, for a long time actually. So um, try to adjust the hidden layers and then, in, and then add some more arguments and adjust the parameter or even using some valid cross validation to find some to find the best um, parameter for your arguments. So um, this is the basic demonstration for how to use the artificial neural network in R. So thanks for watching and uh, feel free to ask me any question or leave a comment below. So um, thank you very much.